the electric type. Perhaps the single most iconic type in all of Pokemon, home to the series mascot, deities of legend, and this absurd freak of nature. It's probably also the most important type in the Pokemon world. I mean, think about how useful creatures that could generate completely clean energy would be. I mean, they literally made a whole game where the villain is a dude who's trying to solve the energy crisis and the rest of the world is like, bro, we ain't got no energy crisis, we got electric types. Weird moral for a story, Pokemon? But sure? But if you take a gander at the list of electric types, you'll notice that some of these Pokemon are a bit more useful than others. I mean, let's face it, the flying squirrel ain't helping society that much. So today, I'm doing what none have dared to do before, and finally answering the question that's been on everybody's mind. I'm busting out the math, and I'm ranking every single electric Pokemon based on how much power they could generate. You're, you're all wondering that, right? That's, uh, I'm not, I didn't just make that up. Richard, hit that intro. This video was suggested by Alakazam and voted on by all my patrons. If you want to support the channel more directly and get cool perks like exclusive live streams, early access, and the ability to vote on future video topics, check the link in the description and down below. In order to rank every electric Pokemon based on their electric power output, we first need to set up some rules. This video is going to be based purely on data from the games, so Pokedex entries, move descriptions, stuff like that. Nothing from the cards or the show, if there's some instance in the manga where Pikachu generates the power of a sun, I don't want to hear it. Nerds! What we're going to do is comb through every single Pokedex entry and move description for all the electric Pokemon and look for any specific mention of a power output, a voltage, stuff like that. As an example, Jolteon's Pokedex entry from Pokemon Red and Blue states that it can blast out 10,000 volt lightning bolts. But what is a volt, I hear you ask? Well, a volt is a unit that measures electrical potential. It correlates to the potential energy of an electrical system. And when it comes to determining the power output of an electric type, they are completely useless. That's, that's not true, that's, that's unfair, they're still a little useful. Electrical power is the rate of transfer of energy in a circuit. It's how much stuff you're doing per second, and it's measured in watts. It can be found by multiplying the voltage by the current, measured in amps, which is the rate of flow of electrons through a circuit. Or from a mechanic standpoint, it can be found by multiplying a force in newtons by a velocity. As you can see, there are a lot of different units to keep track of when you're talking about power, and they all relate to each other in different ways. The Pokedex just loves to throw these units out here and there, a volt here, an amp there, a speed, a joule, don't worry, we'll get to that, and rarely does it give us enough information to accurately and directly compare these things to each other. Long story short, we're gonna need to make a lot of assumptions and educated guesses in this video. And if you don't like that, then you can take it up with Oak and his joke of a scientific encyclopedia. What is this? So. With all that in mind, it's time to begin. Starting off with everyone's favorite yellow Mickey Mouse, Pikachu doesn't have any Pokedex entries that explicitly call out a voltage or a wattage or anything. But it did get its very own Z move called 10 million volt Thunderbolt. Sounds super impressive, 10 million volts. Until you realize a real lightning bolt usually gets to around 300 million. So we know that Pikachu can generate 10 million volts, but to turn that into watts, we need to know what the current of this thunderbolt is. A real life lightning bolt has a current around 30,000 amps. It can vary wildly, but that's the average. 
For those curious, since the power is simply the voltage times the current, if we simply multiply 300 million by 30,000, we can find that a bolt of lightning contains around 9,000 gigawatts of power. So take that, Doc Brown, you idiot! We know that the voltage of Pikachu's Thunderbolt is 30 times less than that of a real Thunderbolt. And without knowing anything else to go on, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that the current is also 30 times less at 1000 amps. It's just a lightning bolt, but smaller. That means that Pikachu is able to generate 10 billion watts with this Z-move. That's the equivalent of 3,100 wind turbines, 20,000 Corvettes, or 13 million horses. That's a lot of watts. All right, that's one down, only 81 left to go. You sure about this one, Richard? Unfortunately, most of the electric Pokemon don't give us nearly as much to go on. The vast majority of these Pokedex entries don't mention any sort of unit and give vague ranges of power. But not all hope is lost, because nearly every single one of these Pokemon can learn the move Thunderbolt. Now, Pokemon wasn't so kind as to give us the exact voltage value for this Thunderbolt like they did with Pikachu, but we do know that when Pikachu zeifies Thunderbolt, the base power jumps from 90 to 195, or a 2.167 times increase. So from this, we can simply divide the power that we calculated for the 10 million volt Thunderbolt by 2.167 to find that a regular Thunderbolt would have a power of 4.61 gigawatts. Now you might be asking, is it really fair to assume that the base power of a Pokemon move directly correlates to its electrical power? Yes. So for any Pokemon that doesn't have a specific voltage or current called out, this is the figure that we're gonna use. So that means that all of these guys just go here, below Pikachu. And if you're mad that this means that a Pokemon like Raikou is ranked at the same spot as a Pichu, again, take it up with Oak. I'm working with what I got here. It's not my fault that he sucks at his job, you moron. I think the Pokedex entry that inspired this suggestion is probably Raichu's from Fire Red, which states its electrical charges can reach even 100,000 volts. Careless contact can cause even an Indian elephant to faint. Now, first of all, this is the world of Pokemon. What the hell is an Indian elephant in this context? So this entry clearly gives us a voltage, but also the feat of being able to knock out an Indian elephant. So the question is, which is higher? Unfortunately, finding the answer to this requires researching how much electricity it would take to kill an elephant, which, you know, isn't something I super want showing up in my search history. Luckily, Thomas Edison didn't have a problem with it. Back in 1903, Edison was experimenting with electricity, making light bulbs, stuff like that, when he somehow came into possession of a circus elephant named Topsy who had killed someone who snuck into her enclosure. So Edison had the great idea to make her stand on some copper floors, feed her some cyanide for some reason, and then energize those floors with 6,600 volts, electrocuting Topsy to death. His goal was to demonstrate the dangers of AC current and take a shot at his rival Nikolai Tesla, and yeah, I mean, if you build the prison from Andor and put an elephant in it, it's gonna be pretty dangerous. Long story short, I'm not so sure that faint is the right word for what would happen if you sent a hundred thousand volts through an elephant. But using our same standard current, that would put Raichu at 100 million watts. And the worst part is, this Pokedex is actually selling it way short because that's lower than the 4.6 billion watts that we calculated for the box standard Thunderbolt. Turns out, there's a reason the only elephants in Pokemon are all ground types. 
Now that you all have that terrible knowledge forever burned into your brain, let's speed through some for a bit. There are a bunch of Pokemon that just have random voltage values called out in their Pokedex entries. Jolteon can blast out 10,000 volts, Toxicitry can generate over 15,000 volts, and Luxio's Claws can put out 1 million volts. Likewise, Zeraora's Claws are described as high voltage, which is generally defined as anything above 1,000 volts. Watrail and Kilowattrail are both clearly named after the Watt and the Kilowatt, which is 1,000 watts. Now, I have no idea if this is supposed to be an indication of how much energy they output, but I'm gonna assume it is. And Pawmot is able to store the same amount of electricity as an electric car. A Tesla Model 3 can store 50 kilowatt hours of energy, which is a different unit from power. In order to find the equivalent power, we would need some sort of time component, which we don't have, but it's probably somewhere between Zeraora at 10,000 watts and Jolteon at 10 million watts. You know, just somewhere in there. That's the lower range of our scale all set, but believe it or not, there are some Pokemon that can top even Pikachu's immense 10 gigawatts. For example, Heliolisk can generate enough electricity to power an entire skyscraper by absorbing energy from the sun. Now, there's no reference to the size of the skyscraper in question, but for reference, the Empire State Building uses around 30 gigawatt hours of energy. There are several Pokemon that are explicitly referenced as being able to create storms and throw real lightning bolts, not just the move Thunderbolt. As we calculated at the start, a single Thunderbolt can contain around 300 gigawatts. These are all legendary Pokemon that can achieve this incredible feat. We're talking Tapu Koko, Zekrom, Thunderous, and a chain of Tynamos. Just, just a bunch of Tynamos, all in a line. Now we're getting into the truly insane levels of power, because Reggie Alecki's Pokedex entry says that it can create enough electricity to power all of Galar. Now, a standard city in the UK consumes around 3.1 gigawatts of power per day. Galar has 12 cities, putting Reggie Alecki's power output somewhere between 27 and 37 gigawatts of power every single day. And somehow, that's not even the limit. We already talked about how Toxicity was able to store 15,000 volts of electricity, but apparently Gigantamaxing is more powerful than I thought, because its Gigantamax entry states that it can store the power of an entire thundercloud. That is 1.3 trillion volts. Turns out the Galar people were right. Rose, you don't gotta go summoning a demon or anything. Literally one of these guys can power three Galars. Easy. And yet, it turns out Dynamax isn't the limit for a Pokemon's power, for there is one Pokemon that dwarfs even this. Mega Manectrix Pokedex entry from Ultra Moon states its explosive speed is equal to that of a Thunderbolt. Now, I'm not sure if you are aware of this or not, little known fact, but a Thunderbolt is pretty fast. And by pretty fast, I mean 270,000 miles an hour. Up until now, we've been using this formula to calculate power, but you can also use this formula for more physical factors. Multiply the mass times the acceleration times the velocity. We know Mega Manectric has a mass of 97 pounds, and our speed is 270,000 miles an hour. We don't know the acceleration. For that, we would need to divide the change in speed by the time it takes to reach top speed. The Pokedex describes it as explosive, which leads me to believe that it's pretty fast. Just to take a stab, let's say five seconds. True, accelerating this fast would probably turn Manectric into a fine mist, but a dog moving at 270,000 miles an hour is not gonna make it no matter what you do. 
Converting everything into metric and plugging it into this formula, we can find that Megamanectric is using 1.7 trillion watts to be able to move this fast. If not the acceleration, if not the air resistance, holding this much power in a six foot body would surely kill this thing. And the worst part, there's still one more. According to Hisuian Electrode's Pokedex entry from Legends Arceus, when irritated, this Pokemon lets loose an electric current equal to 20 lightning bolts. Well, that actually, well, that doesn't sound that bad. As we all know by this point, one lightning bolt has a current of 30,000 amps. Multiplying that by 20, and then multiplying that by the base standard voltage for a thunderbolt that we calculated earlier, when it gets mad, Hisuian Electrode can hit you with a whopping 2.8 trillion watts. That is one-fifth the total power consumption of the entire planet from an angry four-foot ball of wood. You know what? You know what, Oak? I take it back. You're not that bad. Lavatin, are you out of your goddamn mind? 20 light- how do you know the current of one lightning bolt? You live in the freaking Stone Age. You can't just write down big numbers in your encyclopedia and just hope people believe you. You are an embarrassment to all science. A huge thanks to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, Big Dog Tie for to Win, The Boss Killer 94, Alberum Freud and Celicate, and Sir Hammy. <laughs>